Welcome students to Dropshipping 101. Classes in session at the AutoDS School for Dropshippers. And my name is Mario with AutoDS, and I'll be your instructor for today. If you've been wanting to learn dropshipping and everything that you need to know in order to get started with your e-commerce business, then this video is for you. I'm gonna be teaching you everything that you need to know on what dropshipping is, how you can get started, and most importantly, how you can succeed. So if that's something that interests you, if you've been wanting to start your own online business and potentially eventually even quit your own nine to five job, then make sure you check out this video all the way through because today we're gonna to be teaching you everything that you need to know. Let's get started. Now, before we do get started, for those of you that wanna learn a little bit more and are interested in reading up on the topic, in the description, there is gonna be a link to a relevant article. So if you wanna check that out, it'll be there for you. Now let's get started with the basics. What exactly is dropshipping? Well, simply put, dropshipping is a fulfillment business model where you're gonna have your own online store, but you're not gonna fulfill the orders yourself. Instead, your supplier is gonna do it for you. So you're gonna have your online store regardless of the e-commerce platform. Let's say, for example, we're selling on eBay or Etsy, just as an example. Somebody comes to your store, they purchase a t-shirt for $25, and then that order is gonna to come to you where instead of you getting up, taking that t-shirt, packing it, slapping the label on it, going to drop it off to the post office, and doing all of that. Instead, what happens is you forward that order to your supplier. And then your supplier does all of that manual work. Now your customer pays $25 for your shirt. You pay, let's say $12.50 to your supplier. The remaining $12.50, that's gonna be your profit. So as you can see, one of the biggest benefits to this is the fact that it's pretty easy to get started. The entire business model is pretty straightforward and simple. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about a few of the pros and cons to dropshipping. So first off, one of the biggest benefits to dropshipping is that you have a low investment. You don't really need to put up too much money upfront in order to get started. Even though it is a good idea to set some money aside to have a budget for things like marketing and product testing. Besides that, you don't have to carry any inventory. Remember, our suppliers are the ones that are gonna be doing all of our fulfillment for us, not us. So because of that, we don't have to worry about having to stock up on all of these different items, on paying money upfront for bulk orders, or paying for potential storage for these products. Dropshipping also has a very low barrier to entry, meaning pretty much anybody can get started in the business. But don't let that scare you away because it's not necessarily oversaturated like that. While a lot of people do start in the business, in order to succeed, you do need to put some work behind it. It's not just a start up an online store and start making tons of money. No, you do need to put some work behind it, just like anything else. If you really wanna succeed, you need to put a little bit of extra effort. But to actually get started, it's pretty simple. It's very easy to get everything set up and everything that you need to know, again, will be covered in this video. So make sure you keep watching. Starting up a dropshipping business is also very flexible. So you don't necessarily have to start this from an office. You can start this from the Starbucks cafe, your own studio, your house, your living room. As long as you have a computer, you can get started. And even if you have a phone, you can get started dropshipping. Even though with a phone, it is gonna take a bit longer, but with dedication and a little bit of time, you can do it. But that's on the mobile side. If you have a computer, it's a lot easier, trust me. Scaling is also something that's very easy to do. So once you get the ball rolling with your dropshipping store, keeping it going and actually having that ball start to grow, start to scale your store, grow your store even bigger, it's not that hard. It's pretty easy because you already have customers that are coming into your store. You already know what's working for you. You know what products are working for you. So just adding on to that is something that can very well help you. But I'm gonna give you a few extra tips a little bit later on that can help you scale that trust me are gonna be worth the wait. Now, since we do have such a low barrier to entry, since we're not putting up a lot of money up front, or quite frankly, too much time to get started, there really isn't much to lose. At most, what you're gonna lose is maybe a couple of dollars for some products that you tested, or maybe a few dollars that didn't really work on, let's say some ads that you ran. But at the end of the day, this kind of goes with every single business. You need to test to see what works. Some things are gonna work, some things aren't. Now, since we talked about the good, let's talk a little bit about the bad. And for one, it's a very competitive landscape. So like I said, it's very easy to get into, which means a lot of people are gonna start their own businesses. A lot of people are gonna try to get into this and make money fast. But that's the difference between them and you. You know that it's not about making money fast, it's about being steady and actually testing out to see what works and what doesn't. So even though there is a lot of people in the business or in the field, not everyone is gonna succeed because they're just trying to sell anything. People are still trying to sell fidget spinners for that matter. I don't know why people are still trying to do that, but 
for some reason people are which really what this simply means is that these people the ones that are trying to sell these outdated products they're not doing proper product research product research is extremely important in the business and it's something we'll cover in a little bit so let's keep going you also don't have any control over your stock or your shipping times now this is something that can be remedied by simply reaching out to the suppliers that you're working with and ordering a few samples or asking them a few questions my suggestion send them an email see what their shipping times are like then try to create a different account and order a few different samples if you can create multiple accounts order different samples just to make sure that they're not trying to impress you because they want to get your business. Same thing goes for the product quality. A lot of suppliers are going to have really good product quality while others are going to have very bad product quality. And the way for you to differentiate this and find the ones that are good is going to be to order a few samples. Now, I will say this. There's two things in dropshipping that are very, very tedious and can get a bit annoying. One of them is actually importing your products to your store, which we'll cover again in a little bit. And two is fulfilling your orders. Importing products can take a long time, but there are tools like AutoDS that can make it like that, simply by automating the entire process. And same thing goes for fulfilling your orders. When it comes to fulfilling your orders, you have to go to your supplier's website and input all of your customer's details. This, if you're not careful, can lead to a pretty big margin for error. A lot of people here sometimes accidentally put, let's say the wrong number, the wrong name, the wrong zip code, or it's one thing wrong in the entire field and that order is not going to get to the customer, which in turn will create a lot more problems. But again, services like AutoDS can facilitate this entire process and do the entire thing for you. All right, now that we talked about the good and the bad, let's go ahead and actually get started with our business, shall we? So what do you need to know to get started? How can we get started with our dropshipping business? Well, first off, one thing that you need to do before anything is going to be simply to set a budget and figure out your taxes. So your budget really is going to depend on your selling platform. Now, where can you sell on? Now, just to give you a heads up, the basic store plan on Shopify is going to run you about $29.99, but that's for the yearly plan. So you're going to have to pay everything at once. If you're going to go month to month, it's going to be $39.99. Of course, these prices are always subject to change and always make sure you check out Shopify because there's always going to be some sort of promotion going on. Next, we have WooCommerce. Now, WooCommerce is similar to Shopify, except to be completely honest with you, it's a little bit more complicated to get started in. But if you do know WooCommerce, if it's a platform that you've used before, you can easily set up your own online store on there. And for that, we suggest a budget of about $500. Then we have eBay. Now, eBay, like we mentioned earlier, is a marketplace, not necessarily your own store. So to get started on here, you can get started with a lower budget. We can go anywhere between maybe $50 to $100. So that way we can purchase the products ahead of time. Remember, with dropshipping, what's going to happen is once that order is placed in your store, then you're going to place that order with your supplier, which in turn means that you're going to have to pay for that product. And then you're going to have to wait for eBay to give you the payout. And that's what this budget is going to be for, to be able to wait for your next payout, which you're going to be able to then use, reinvest into the next order. eBay sometimes, especially for new sellers, can have some sort of restrictions or even some payout delays just to make sure that, you know, as a seller, you're trustworthy. Then we have Amazon. Now, Amazon, again, is a marketplace and it's similar to eBay, except it has its own demographic of people. Now, with Amazon, we suggest anywhere between five to about seven hundred dollars. And these are a few things that you need to take into consideration. For one, whenever you make a sale on Amazon, you're going to get charged one dollar if you're going with the free plan. There's also a professional plan which can cost you forty dollars a month. But my suggestion is going to be to basically take the basic seller account, the one that you pay $1 for every order, and keep using that until you have a consistent inflow of 40 orders a month. Once you start to have that, then you can transition to the professional account where you're going to be paying those $40 per month, but you're not going to be paying on each order that you sell. Then we have Wix. Now Wix is going to be the cheapest one. It's going to be the cheapest option and monthly, they're going to charge you about $17 per month to get started on their platform. Wix is going to be like your own website. So it's going to be like Shopify and WooCommerce. And to get started on here, you can get started for about $500. And last but not least, my personal favorite, Etsy. Etsy is a specific marketplace that caters to a specific group of people. For those of you that don't know, Etsy sells a lot of handmade items, a lot of t-shirts, tumblers, things along those lines, a lot of prints on demand. Now on Etsy, you can get started for, let's say about $100 for the same reason that we talked about with eBay. Potential payout delays, and also to get started on Etsy, you do need to pay a $15 fee to open up your store. Now, remember, all of these prices are subject to change. A lot of the times 
different promotions go on. You can get started for a bit cheaper. You might be able to get a few months free. So if by the time that you're watching this video, some of the prices change, you know why. All right, so we talked about the different selling platforms. So the next thing you need to do is actually choose one of those and open up your account on there. Now, getting started with Etsy, eBay, and Amazon, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is register for an account. But when you get started with your own actual store, your own online website, that can get a bit more complicated. Wix and WooCommerce work, but it's a lot of manual work. Now, Shopify, Shopify works very, very well for this. On top of that, Shopify makes it very easy for you to customize your own online store. But with that being said, I know that a lot of people aren't very good at creating their own store, actually getting down to it, organizing a few of the different images, making sure that everything is, you know, up to date, that everything looks good. Everything is coherent. All of the different colors look good together. It's not for everybody. So I'm going to show you right now one of the easiest ways for you to actually create your entire Shopify store in less than, let's say, two or three minutes. So for this, the one thing you're going to need is an account with AutoDS. If you're interested to join AutoDS or test this out, you can give us a shot for the next two weeks for just one dollar for your trial period. Now, once you have everything set up and you're signed into your account, what you're going to have to do is up here, you're going to see ad store. Now, if you don't see it, click on whatever you see up there and then you're going to see ad store down here. Then we're going to choose Shopify store and build with AI. Click on continue. Then we're going to go ahead and choose the middle option, which is the use AI to generate a pre-built Shopify store. And then you have to choose your niche. Now, what is it about niches that gets people? A lot of people are very indecisive about their niche. So let me give you a few tips. For one, make sure you choose a niche that you're passionate about, something that you know about, something that you actually like, because that in itself is going to make it a lot easier for you to actually do product research and find products that are actually worth it or worthwhile. If you get into a niche that you know nothing about, that's going to be extremely hard for you to actually get started in it and do proper product research and find products that are actually going to sell or things that are useful. So because of that, I highly suggest you start one that is something that you know, something that you're passionate about, or at least something that you know a little bit about. Now on this page, you're going to have a few different niches. You're going to have fashion and apparel, which is pretty good for year round. You can sell anything when it comes to fashion and apparel throughout the entire year. It's a pretty evergreen niche and it has its spikes here and there for things like Mother's Day, Christmas and certain holidays. Same thing goes for electronics and gadgets, electronics and gadgets and accessories and all that stuff. It sells year round, but it also has some pretty big spikes in terms of sales. Let's say around the holidays. Home and garden is another evergreen niche where it's going to have its spikes, let's say around springtime or even seasonal spikes, because everyone likes to change things around their house for the different seasons or the different holidays like Halloween, Valentine's Day, Christmas and all of these different times. Pets. Pets is my hands down favorite niche. Everyone loves their pets. People who have cats and dogs, they do not mind spending money on their pets comfort. People see their pets as pretty much their kids at this point. Sports and fitness is also another good one. It's something that sells you around. And a lot of the times it's geared more towards the younger generation. And then I'm not sure is simply going to be a generic store. It's going to have a little bit of everything and it's not going to be specific to a niche. Now, regardless of which one of these you choose, you're going to have about 10 different products that are imported to your store from our handpicked product section. These are going to be automatically imported. And trust me, these are going to be best sellers that are going to help you out in just simply getting started. So let's go with pets. Again, that's my favorite niche. Click on next. And then AI is going to build our store for us. All right, that's it. Now we need to simply go to open Shopify store plans, copy over our email, paste it on there, copy our password, paste that on there as well. And then we need to choose our plan. So like I mentioned earlier, Shopify has their different plans, the basic one starting at $29.99 or $39.99 for the month to month. But the first month is a dollar, at least for now. So once you do this and you choose your plan, you're pretty much going to be all set to get started. If you want to check out your store and see what it looks like, simply go to online store, click on this little icon over here. And here we have your pet paradise store. You have already some preset banners. You have some preset text. This right here in the my store, I suggest you change that. So you can go ahead and create your own logo. Maybe use a service like Kittle or Canva. Scrolling down, you can see the different products that were automatically imported. So we have the automatic feeder and a few more still loading up on my end. And then you have your customer reviews. So overall, the website looks pretty legit. It looks pretty good. This is something that would have probably taken me maybe an hour or two hours, maybe even three to put everything together. Actually, no more simply because it also has the different policy pages. 
like your return policy, your shipping policy, a frequently asked questions section. So this is all stuff that really takes a lot of time that's getting done for you almost instantly. Now from here, really, the last thing you're going to have to do is to just customize it. Customize it a bit more to your liking, a bit more to whatever vision you have for your brand or for your store. All right, after we have our store fully set up and ready to go, the next thing we need to do is start filling it up with more and more products. Products that are going to be relevant to our niche. And in order to do this, we need to conduct proper product research. So how do you conduct proper product research? Well, there's a few things that you need to take into consideration. For one, the products that you offer, they need to have a wow factor. When somebody sees it, they need to think, whoa, this is pretty cool. I need this now. The whole point of this is to have your customer think, I need this now. You don't want them to think, oh, can I get this cheaper anywhere else? This is too overpriced. I can probably find it on Amazon. No, we're not looking for the deal seekers. We're looking for the impulse buyers. Besides that, it also needs to provide some sort of value to your customer's life. If a product doesn't provide any value to anybody's life, then nobody's going to see any point in purchasing it. Also, in terms of pricing, you want to make sure that it's also a product that you can sell at least between two to two and a half times the price. So if something costs you $10, you want to be able to sell it at least between $20 to $25. This can help you take into consideration any of the potential fees that you're going to have to pay later on, whether that be payment processor fees, subscription fees, or whatever else it is. Now, one of the easiest ways to get started with your product research, since you already have an account with AutoDS, is going to have to be just simply going to the handpicked product section and checking out what's available through here. All of the products on here have been chosen by expert dropshippers, and everything on here, either one, has a history of trending or being bestsellers, or two are currently trending and are best sellers. Now, since we are in the pet niche, we're just going to click on the pet section over here. And then you have all of these different products that you can check out. This is interesting. A foldable dog hair dryer. All right, let's check this out. This caught my attention. This is what you want. Things that catch your attention, things that have a wow factor. And this is really cool. This is something that can dry your pet pretty much instantly with just that that one suit. That's crazy. So once you click into the product, you have a lot of information on here that can help you make a decision on whether or not it's worthwhile selling. For one, you have an engagement score and you have a saturation score. This engagement score tells you how active this product is on social media, how many people are interacting with the posts, how many people are liking the videos, how many people are commenting on the videos. All of that gets tallied up and it gets put over here. Now, this is pretty active, meaning a lot of people are talking about it. There's a lot of buzz around this on social media. Then the saturation score simply means how many people are selling this product. This is kind of an average. So what you're going to see is a saturation score of 60, which currently is at the busy mark. What this means is that there are a lot of people selling it, but it's not oversaturated. Not too many people are selling it where you're not going to be able to get in there and start making a few sales yourself. One thing I always suggest is to order a sample for yourself and start making some videos on it. If you have a dog, order something like this, make a few videos on it, and videos like that tend to go crazy. People love videos with dogs. So content marketing is where it's at. Then if you want to run ads on it, like let's say for TikTok ads or Facebook ads, we have a target audience for you. So you can take this stuff into consideration. It's not necessary. It's not mandatory, but these are very helpful suggestions. So in terms of interests, you want to look for people that are interested in pet care, dog grooming, convenience products, or even travel with pets. You have the gender, so males and females between the ages of 25 and 55, and a bit more information over here in terms of their occupation. So pet owners, pet groomers, vets, and animal shelter workers. This product would be very good for anybody in this category. Now, I said that you need to do your content marketing, make some videos, and that'll help you out with getting a bit of exposure. But if you're not sure how to do that, or if you don't know how to structure your videos, you also have a social ad section. On here, you're gonna find different videos, whether it be on TikTok or Facebook, with this same product, Let's see this one right here really fast. That are going to show you, you know, that are going to show you how it works and how you can structure your own ad. So you can see here, they're just simply using it and it has just under 500 likes, no comments. But even though this video doesn't have too much interactions, you can definitely make it a little bit better or a little bit more extra to get more attention. Besides that, you also have the TikTok ad spy. So on here, you can see a lot of different products that are being promoted on TikTok, not just TikTok, but also Facebook and even Instagram. 
Here you can see what people are selling and how they're advertising it. Now, even though we are able to sell practically anything, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should sell anything. Certain products can get your listings taken down or even your store entirely banned. Some of those are gonna include things like copyrighted products. You never wanna sell anything that's copyright. You don't wanna sell anything that's a knockoff or anything that's already branded. Another thing you don't wanna sell is gonna be age-restricted products. So you don't wanna sell things that are gonna be, let's say, specific for adults. There's gonna be a lot of things that fall into this category. So just overall, avoid anything that's age restricted, go with things that pretty much anybody can use. Now with the age restrictions also comes dangerous goods. So anything that could potentially pose a threat to absolutely anyone, don't sell that. A perfect example for this is gonna be things like pocket knives. People tend to sell these because people like them for hunting or for going camping, but this is a potentially hazardous item that it's just best to stay away from. And then the other thing is gonna be medicines and supplements. Medicines, just completely stay away from that. Supplements, be very careful on what you sell because some people might have adverse reactions to the ingredients in the supplements. So if you do decide to sell supplements, make sure you list absolutely everything that is included in that supplement and any potential dangers, any warnings, or any precautions that the customer should take. All right, next, once you find a product that you wanna to import to your store, then you can simply go ahead and click on import draft and it'll be updated to your draft section. So let's say we like this pet bed. All we gotta do is click on import draft, choose our store. In this case, we're gonna go with the one we just created, which I think was this one right here. And then once that's done, just simply click on your draft section and you're gonna see it on here. Now, on this page, you can go ahead and click to edit and you can edit absolutely everything that you need on the listing before having it go live on your store. So you can change the title, add it to any collections if you're drop shipping it on Shopify. You can also change your description. And the best thing about here is that you can optimize your description with AI, but not only your description, but also your title. Now, besides that, you have your variant section where you can go ahead and update the pricing. This is gonna make pricing so much easier for you because you can already take into consideration your fees. So let's say 13% in fees, how much profit we wanna make. Let's say we wanna make 100% profit, no dollar amount profit, which gives us a selling price of about $39.06 with a profit of $16.99. Here in the $16.99, our fees are already deducted. So this is what we're gonna be making. Whereas here in the sell price, that's what we're gonna be selling already including the fees. Now, when it comes to your product importing, you're not just limited to products from AutoDS. You can import products from a lot of other suppliers, such as AliExpress, Alibaba, Amazon, Etsy, other Shopify stores, and the list goes on. Now, in order to do this, it's really easy. All you gotta do is find a product that you wanna upload or import. In my case, I found this dog leash that I wanna add to my store, and all I have to do is simply click on the link Go ahead and copy it or cut it. I like cutting just because it gives me a visual representation that I actually cut it. And then run back over to AutoDS, click on add products, and then you can do single product or multiple products. Let me show you the multiple products because this is my favorite. So we add one here, then we can simply just go to our second supplier, let's say Amazon. And here I wanna add a dog bed. So this is just a quick example, but let's take for example, this one right here. Actually, I have that same bed for my dog. So let's go ahead and cut that, run back to AutoDS, press enter, and then paste it again. Now you can repeat this as many times as you want for as many products as you want. And once you're done, all you have to do is click on add as draft. Then once it's all done and completed, you're gonna have your different options here. So we have the one that we imported from AutoDS, the handpick product section. We also have the one that we imported from Amazon and the one that we imported from AliExpress. Now, if you didn't have AutoDS, you would have to do all of this manually, meaning you would have to go to, let's say, our Amazon listing, the one where we want to source our product from. Go ahead and open up our Shopify store, add a product. Then we're gonna have to copy over all of this, copy it, paste it to Shopify, add the different variations. As you can see, there's quite a few. There's two, four, six, eight different variations and four different colors. So there's, what's eight times four? My math is so bad. 32, I knew that. So there's 32 different variations. In order to do this, it's gonna take you so long just to upload one product that it's it's so much more easier to automate the entire thing. And plus, you have less room for error or really no room for error when you automate it. Because when you're copying all of this over, you might accidentally change some of these numbers or you might mix up the different colors. And while it is possible and you can definitely do it, it can get very tedious and it can get very time consuming. Now, after you have your store filled with different types of products, then the next thing you need to do is start advertising these products. You need to make sure that customers know that you have all of these available for them. And the way you do this is gonna vary depending on your platform. So if you're selling on Amazon, eBay, or Etsy, it's gonna be a lot easier simply because like I mentioned earlier, people are gonna be going to those platforms 
ready to make a purchase. So people go to those platforms already looking for things to buy, but you are also able to run ads on them. So Etsy, Amazon, and eBay all have their different ways of running ads, which can potentially put you in front of the eyes of a lot more customers. Now with Shopify, Wix, and WooCommerce, nobody's gonna know that those stores are there unless you tell them or unless you put it in front of people. So nobody's gonna know that you opened up your own pet store. You're gonna have to start running ads on that store, whether that be on TikTok or Facebook, or you can start making content. So like I've always said, content marketing is, it's the best, content is king. Going viral on TikTok and Instagram Reels is easier now than it's ever been. So just order a few samples, start making a few videos, check out our AutoDS handbaked product section so you can start to get ideas on how to make that content or how to structure your videos. And from there, just start making more and more and start scaling your own social media page. This is gonna be extremely helpful and honestly, Nowadays, if your business doesn't have a social media, then you're missing out on a massive amount of clients or customers or sales. Now, after that, after you start running ads on your products and you start marketing your products, then that's when the orders start coming in. So once you get an order, the last thing you need to do, or sorry, the second to last thing you need to do is gonna be fulfilling that order. Obviously as dropshippers, we don't have to do it ourselves. So once you get that order, just simply go to your supplier's website, add the item to the cart, put in your customer's order details and have it shipped to them. Now, again, this can lead to a lot of room for error, especially if you're trying to do things quicker. Also one or two orders, it's fine to do it manually, but anything more than maybe five or six, it starts to get pretty time consuming. So in which case AutoDS can also facilitate the whole thing by automating it. Now this is where you're gonna see all of your different orders and you're also gonna see their status. So as you can see, this one has already been ordered. These three have been delivered. This one had an issue simply because the supplier, it stopped offering it or it changed the variation. I don't remember what it was, but th there was a big issue and I didn't have the option where it alerts me, where AutoDS alerts me when there's a change to the product. So I messed up on that part. But besides that, you can see the rest. You have a few others that are delivered and anything that's unmonitored is stuff that's not being tracked by AutoDS. So let's say you actually have something that you wanna sell yourself. So maybe, I don't know, I have this particular mug laying around the house that I don't want anymore. I just uploaded it and that's why it shows unmonitored because it's not part of my dropshipping plan. And that's pretty much it. After that, the next thing you need to do is just simply provide the best possible customer service you can. Whether that be before your customer makes a purchase, if they have any questions or concerns, or after they make a purchase, if they have any questions about their order or if they wanna know anything or you know the status of it. So always make sure that you have proper customer service simply because if you don't, you're not gonna have returning customers. And I always say that our customer service is an extension of our supplier's customer service. So make sure that your suppliers, make sure that they get back to you at least within a day. Anything more than that, it's, it's too long. Think about it this way. If somebody reaches out to you and they ask you a question about a particular item and you don't have the answer, you're gonna to have to reach out to your supplier and ask them. If it takes them more than one day to get back to you, it's gonna take you one day plus a little bit extra to get back to your customer. By that time, your customer's already gonna be either long gone purchasing it from somebody else or they already forgot that they even messaged you in the first place. So always make sure that your suppliers have good communication by testing them out, sending them an email, see how they communicate with you, and make sure to relay any information you get for your customers as quick as possible. Do not sleep on that because again, customers, they don't like that. They don't like waiting, especially in the age of Amazon. And that was today's Dropshipping 101 class. What did you guys think of today's video? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember, there's also gonna be a relevant article in the description. So if you want access to that, if you wanna read a little bit more, make sure you check that out. Huge thank you to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. As always, it truly means a lot that you've been here with me. Please, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Once again, my name is Mario with AutoDS, and I'll catch you all next time.